Tree wounds do not heal. Instead, they are sealed. There are many aspects of how a tree responds to wounds, damage, attacks, and threats that we are continuing to better understand. What further complicates our attempt to better understand is that trees can have different results or consequences to the same kind of wounds. The range of different results can be somewhat expected when comparing different family and genus of trees, but we also find differences in results from the very same species within a genus. So why would some trees effectively deal with wounds and threats while others of the same species fail? We usually start with the understanding that a combination of environment and genetics help determine various results. One of the main things we look for are any processes and responses that remain constant regardless of family, genus, or species. Dr. Alex Shigo presented one of the most accurate models describing how trees respond to wounds. He called this model CODIT, C-O-D-I-T. CODIT stands for Compartmentalization of Decay in Trees. If you are unfamiliar with Dr. Alex Shigo's work, I enthusiastically recommend that you look him up. His work with trees is simply brilliant. Our first recognition is that when a tree is wounded, it will attempt to seal off the damaged area from the rest of the tree. This sealing and containment is the tree's physical and chemical defensive response. Naturally, a tree consists of many microorganisms. The wounded, injured tissue can attract additional organisms, infections, or the spread of pathogens. Simplified, the tree tries to deal with harmful organisms at a faster rate than their attack and spread at the wound site. A tree will compartmentalize a wounded area in a distinct order of stages described by the CODIT model. The order can be categorized as a two-part process. The first part of the process is the first response from the tree, which are localized immediate responses, where the natural defensive elements of the tree's damaged cells at the wound site interact with any threats, such as fungi and bacteria colonizing the wound surface. This involves the tree immediately reacting after the incident. The content of these cells at the wound site combined with air and other cells to produce compounds which can resist the spread of harmful activity. Sugars are also converted to toxic substances that become antimicrobial, also resulting, also resisting the harmful results of a wound. Basically, these antimicrobial products cannot be used as food by microorganisms, um, you ultimately inhibiting their spread from the wound site to healthy tissue. During part one, after the immediate response to wounding, three distinct reaction zones interact to help localize the injury. We describe these reaction zones in terms of the formation of barriers or walls. It is not actually a wall, but more like a process that acts as a containment or barrier to compartmentalize the infected site. Basically, the tree is attempting to seal off any disease-causing organisms. Each reaction zone, acting like a wall or barrier, is the tree resisting the spread of the pathogen. The first zone, or wall 1, resists the vertical spread of the wound, forming above and below the wound. This reaction dominantly involves the production of tylosis that blocks xylem vessels. Generally, the water-conducting vessels get plugged by parenchyma cells that balloon into the vessels through pits in the walls. Those same pits can also close up. Granular material can fill the vessels, and air bubbles can develop that resist the transport of liquids. The plugged-up vessels act as a barrier. It is by far the weakest wall. The second zone, or wall 2, sets up at the first intact annual ring inside the xylem. We describe this barrier as being behind the wound site, resisting the inward spread. In actuality, the second barrier is really the already present, lignified woody cells from old growth. It acts as a barrier because the chemical inhibitor, lignin, present in the rings cannot be digested by most microorganisms. A buildup of lignin will turn sapwood into heartwood, which also acts as a barrier. Wall 2 is stronger than wall 1. The third zone, or wall 3, is set up on either side of the wound at the intact medullary rays, resisting lateral or sideways spread. The medullary rays are responsible for lateral movement of sugars. The buildup on the left and right of the wound are constantly recharged with sugar, making this barrier the strongest of the three produced at the time of wounding. The second group of responses occurs with the first flush of growth post-wounding. This means that the defensive processes of part two do not initiate until or unless the tree is in its growing season or when the cambium is active. For a basic example, 
If a tree is wounded during the winter, it will not initiate the second part of the process until the spring or the next surge of cambial activity. The second part of the defensive process is described as wall four. The first new growth of wood over the wound is called callus tissue. It is a barrier zone consisting of a new layer of cells that separate the diameter of the tree at the time of wounding from the new tissue formed. Wall 4 is described as very chemically strong but physically weak, but basically it is still described as the strongest of all walls and the tree's best defense mechanism. Wall 4 will continue to grow until the layers seal or compartmentalize the wound. The continued wood growth after the first layer of new growth callus tissue is called wound wood.